When disaster strikes, the responsibility of ensuring safe and rapid mitigation of the incident falls upon one person, the incident commander. The incident commander must be able to think quickly, logically and practically, while addressing multiple issues at the same time. As the complexity of an incident increases, the proper delegation of duties is essential to ensuring that the incident progresses efficiently. When addressing a call, such as a structure fire, auto accident, or gas leak, there are usually enough resources on the scene to treat any potential patients encountered. The incident becomes a mass casualty when the number of patients overwhelm on-scene resources or exceeds 10 patients. When an MCI is declared, the incident commander's responsibilities significantly increase. An MCI is not a standalone event. Hazardous environments may be encountered, which will require the incident commander to simultaneously mitigate the hazards while overseeing the EMS branch. Engine 623, engine 403, engine 421, engine 434, rescue engine 433, truck 403, channel 4, Delta box 43801 for building fire at 14400 Woodmere Court at the Forest Glen Senior Residence, smoke showing from the roof. 1300 hours. Battalion 1 from Engine 623. I'm on the scene of a three story assisted living facility. I have visualized all four sides and have fire showing from side alpha on floor number two. The building is currently being evacuated. Start me at RIT level one. We have our own water and will be stretching an inch and three quarter through the main entrance on side alpha. Engine 623 from Battalion 443. I'm direct on your traffic. Three-story assisted living facility with fire showing from the second floor on side alpha. You have your own water and are stretching an inch and three quarter through the front door on side alpha. Break. Fairfax from Battalion 443. I'm on the scene establishing assisted living command. Passport drop off will be out my buggy on side alpha. Command from Medic 420. I'm on side Bravo. I have residents exiting the building. I appear to have minor burns and smoke inhalation. I have approximately 20 patients. Medic 420, I'm direct on your traffic. Approximately 20 patients with burns and smoke inhalation. Break. Fairfax from command, dispatch me an MCI alarm on an alternate channel. Fairfax direct, your MCI alarm will be on 4 Foxtrot, 1408. The incident commander has recognized that there is a large number of injured patients exiting the structure and must now balance managing both the structure fire they were dispatched for as well as the MCI they have now encountered. Due to the number of resources required to manage a large number of patients, quick recognition of a mass casualty incident and requesting an MCI alarm as opposed to requesting individual units will optimize the management of the incident. Battalion 307, I have you establishing the suppression branch on 4 Delta. Battalion 1101 will be taking over the EMS branch on 4 Foxtrot once he arrives on scene. Dispatch from Assistant Living Command, I'm ready for a command channel and the operations channel will remain on 4 Delta. Assistant Living Command from Fairfax, your command channel will be on 4 Echo. The MCI alarm is responding on 4 Foxtrot and the suppression branch will stay on 4 Delta, 1412. The incident commander is faced with an evolving fire scene and multiple patients. He has decided the best way to implement organizational structure and maintain span of control is to establish suppression and EMS branches. The fire is now being controlled by the suppression branch. Now let's take a closer look at how the EMS branch and incident commander interact during a complex incident. Medic 420 from command, begin triaging the patients and once the first engine from the MCI alarm arrives on scene, they'll help establish the triage unit. Fairfax from Assisted Living Command, dispatch one additional transport unit on 4 Delta. The incident commander has chosen to use a resource from the initial building fire to begin MCI operations and will need to replace that unit in the suppression branch. Until the battalion chief from the MCI alarm arrives, the incident commander is responsible for managing the EMS branch of the incident since he has delegated all suppression operations to the 2nd Battalion Chief by creating a suppression branch. 
The EMS Branch Director Command Board is a valuable tool that the incident commander should use to identify the priorities and unit assignments for any incident involving multiple patients. Command to all units responding on the MCI alarm, suppression units, stage on Walker Street and report directly to the EMS Branch Director. Transport units proceed directly to the scene and prepare to receive transports. With the exception of the transport units, resources dispatched on the MCI alarm do not need their apparatus. The apparatus should be staged in an area away from the incident that does not block access for transport units or any additional suppression units needed for the initial fire. Part of the overall success of the incident is dependent upon early identification of staging for incoming suppression units and establishing a transportation corridor. RJ, I've got you as the EMS branch director. I got all the units listed um, on the response coming to you. I've directed all of them to respond to you on 4 Foxtrot. Medic 4, uh, 420 is going to be in the process of doing triage. Haven't gotten a final count yet, but right now it's approximately 20 patients. Uh, we'll have to continue monitoring that, and transport units have been, have been told to go directly to the transportation group once that's established. Okay, Chief, do we have enough resources or are we going to need additional MCI alarm? Uh, I think at this time we have enough, but we'll continue to monitor. Okay. When patients exceed the number of available transport units, commanders have the option of requesting an additional MCI alarm. EMS task force or single resources. The initial MCI alarm is designed to manage approximately 25 patients. Second and subsequent MCI alarms can be requested to manage 25 patients each. An EMS task force manages incidents with 10 patients or less. Like other NOVA manuals, the MCI manual uses pre-assigned roles and responsibilities to ensure MCI operations such as triage, transport, and treatment are set up and executed as quickly as possible. We recognize each incident is unique and dynamic. Incident priorities may require the incident commander to assign MCI operations to units initially dispatched on the fire, as we saw with Medic 420. Units arrived on scene of a building fire and encountered active fire and multiple patients. With both aspects of the incident needing to be managed simultaneously, the IC chose to create an EMS and a suppression branch. Based on the initial count of 20 patients, an MCI alarm was dispatched on a separate channel, compartmentalizing the branches for better communications and overall management of the scene. The incident commander used the EMS Branch Director Command Board as a reference for critical tasks. He should designate an apparatus staging area and ensure access and egress for the transport units. With Battalion 1101 assuming EMS Branch Director, the incident commander can return focus to overall incident management.